Epilogue Back again, Magic looked terribly amused. Twilight hated it. And so soon. You didn't tell me I'd be seeing the others. I could have succeeded. Magic narrowed her eyes. Frankly, I don't want to help you. You should be thankful I'm so talkative. I should never have told you as much about us elements as I did, but sometimes I can't help myself. Her face changed demeanor suddenly. However, I can't help but be impressed. For the first time since my creation, I got to actually speak with some of the other elements. Oh, they were none too happy with you. Twilight looked around. She hadn't thought about her successful severings. I take it they all went back to their original hosts after I died. You were killed. The binding spell no longer had anything to bind to. Magic sighed. You're so clever, Twilight. Why don't you try not stealing elements next time? Twilight thought about it. She had failed twice now, but here she had another chance to do it right, and this time nothing would get in her way. No, I don't think so, and I think I'll be going back to the same time I did last time. No reason to go any earlier, I guess. If you say so, better luck this time. And you say you haven't heard anything, anything at all? The royal guards by Celestia's side looked at Rarity, hard. Rarity shook her head. I don't know why you think I'd know any more than any other pony, but I simply have no idea where Twilight could have gotten off to. Rarity was very proud of herself. Lying to the princess was no easy feat, but she seemed to be doing a good job. She hoped the others had been just as good. It took a little over a week before every pony began to notice Twilight was missing, and another week before news got back to Princess Celestia. It was strange, Rarity thought, that the princess herself was taking such an active role in finding out what happened. But then, Twilight had been the princess's prized student. Princess Celestia sighed. She nodded to her guards in turn, who nodded before leaving the boutique. Rarity suddenly felt afraid. As soon as the two male ponies had left, Princess Celestia turned and glared at Rarity. Rarity swallowed hard. I must admit, you're a pretty good liar. Had it not already been clear what has happened, I might have actually believed you. But your friends, they're not good liars. And your aura, it's twice as strong as your friends as well. Rarity's ears folded back in fear. This was it. She was going to pay for what had happened. Celestia laughed coldly. Do not worry. It does me no good to do anything to you and your friends. Twilight had her job, and she failed. There's nothing I can do about it now, so you are all off the hook. I haven't heard any rumors floating around about what she was doing, so obviously you are keeping your mouths shut. And as long as they stay that way, everything will be fine for you. So, that just leaves me wondering where Twilight's body is. That's all I'm here for. Just tell me, and you can go back to your lives. Rarity looked away. She couldn't bear to look at the princess anymore. Everything she had ever been told about the beloved and benevolent Princess Celestia was a lie, and it was just too much to deal with right now. She was buried in Sweet Apple Acres, somewhere in the orchard. I don't know exactly where. Celestia snorted. I figured as much. The princess stood tall. Rarity felt her knees bend in submissiveness. She couldn't help it. A bright flash of light, and suddenly Rarity was standing in the middle of the apple orchard in Sweet Apple Acres. It was a secluded spot, and even though it was still daylight, there was no pony else in sight. You will do your best to take me where Twilight is buried. Rarity nodded silently. She was frantic. She really wasn't paying much attention when Big Mac had led her to the hole. She just followed the stallion and dumped the box when she got to the hole. She didn't even stick around to bury it. Nevertheless, despite not paying attention, Rarity's eye for detail never failed. She could feel little inklings of where the plot might be, based on bits of foliage and distinctive soil formations that she had subconsciously taken note of. All through the searching, she could feel Celestia's gaze on her, as if it were boring through her body. Finally, Rarity walked over a piece of ground that felt looser than the soil around it. It looked like it could be it, and she pointed with a hoof that this was the location. She hoped she was right. Celestia nodded, and without a word, she teleported Rarity back to her boutique. Rarity slumped to the ground, glad to finally be away from the princess. 
For the first time since Twilight's death, she felt incredibly vulnerable. If she was wrong, Celestia would surely do something awful to her. The rest of the day was spent doing nothing but hoping Celestia wouldn't show up again. The next morning, Rarity relaxed. If the princess hadn't shown up by now, she had probably found what she wanted. Now, Rarity could finally get back to her life. The first thing to do was to move out of the boutique. She still couldn't stand the place. She didn't even want it to continue to exist, so she had to get rid of the building before selling the land, which meant she needed a place to stay. Luckily, Applejack had a lot of spare room and allowed her to stay without asking any questions. The days on the farm were quiet, and Rarity spent most of her time making modest dresses. Strangely, she found it far easier now to make things magically than she used to. She could create an entire outfit with just a quick thought and some fabric. She really didn't know what to make of it, but in the end, it wasn't important. The nights were even better than the days. Rarity didn't wake herself up anymore, and she was glad that moving out of the boutique turned out to be the right decision. As soon as her boutique was demolished, she sold the empty plot of land and bought a nice cottage just outside of Ponyville, near Applejack's farm. Really, she decided she didn't need to move to Canterlot and design dresses. She had already fulfilled that dream, even if Twilight had taken the end result from her. This life, it would be like an early retirement. A very, very early retirement. Pinkie Pie said goodbye to the stallion, neglecting to let him in for coffee. She closed the door behind her. She took a glance at the clock and saw the date had run long. She was going to be late if she didn't leave soon. Pinkie ran to her coffee table and grabbed a few bits of candy out of her candy bowl before heading back outside. Over the years, Pinkie and her friends had put a lot of effort into not drifting apart. It had happened before. It wasn't happening again. And today, Pinky had dinner plans with Rarity. It was easy to find time to hang out with Rarity. She was very good at making dresses magically, and she could fill her orders quickly enough that she was usually free to do something fun. And she seemed to always enjoy the company. Making her way across Ponyville to Rarity's house, Pinky thought about how little things had changed. There were still some strange differences that no pony could trace the origins of, but for the most part, things were just as they had been before. They had had the same old adventures, just without Twilight. Pinky finally arrived at Rarity's. Her house was so different from her old boutique. For one, it was designed like a normal house. For two, it was a lot plainer than her old boutique was. Very simple, but still elegant. Not a lot of fancy decorations, but everything was kept neat and tidy. Pinky didn't bother to knock, instead simply letting herself in. Inside, she found Rarity sewing some fabric together on one of her mannequins. It looked like she had just started a new dress. What you working on? Rarity didn't look away from her work as she answered. Getting a head start on this order. I don't have to be done for another week, so it's nothing that can't wait. And wait it did, as Rarity suddenly turned around, setting the needle and thread she was magically holding down on a nearby table, next to her cat, Opalescence. Oh dear, just look at the time! I had no idea it had gotten so late! Pinky nodded. Neither did I, but it's alright. It's not like we needed reservations. True. Well, give me a moment to get ready and we'll be off. Pinky smiled and waited patiently for Rarity to get ready. When Rarity was done, Pinky honestly couldn't tell the difference, but she wasn't going to say so. At the restaurant, they quietly sat down and placed their orders. They were old in spirit. They didn't need to think hard on what they wanted to eat. So, Pinky Pie, how's the new business venture going? Pinky shoved a spoonful of ice cream into her mouth. It's going great! I wonder why it didn't happen before! Now I get to party even more! Pinkie Pie had been wandering from job to job for years. She only recently realized she could be paid to throw parties. Ponies all over always needed a good party, and nobody was a better party pony than Pinky. They paid good money for her help and advice, and so far, she had never had a dissatisfied customer. It felt strange charging ponies for what she used to do for free, but a pony had to make a living somehow. Well, it's not too hard to guess, dear. You used to love working for the cakes. But we... we all understand why that changed. Pinky's smile faded. She nodded. Rainbow Dash is coming to visit in a week, isn't she? 
Pinky's smile returned as she took another bite of ice cream. You betcha! Spike's coming with her too, you know. It'll be great seeing him again. Rarity chuckled. Of all of us, I'm surprised it's been Rainbow Dash who's kept in touch with him the most. We exchange our letters, of course, but those two could probably fill an entire library with their correspondence. Pinky didn't take much notice when Rarity's eyes suddenly got that faraway look they sometimes got. Pinky was sure she got that look, too, every now and again. They all had the same problem, after all, except for Fluttershy. Anyway, Rarity's eyes shifted back into focus. Forgive me, I completely forgot to ask. How was your date earlier? Pinky groaned. Terrible. I'm sure he had a good time, but I just want him to get me pregnant so I don't have to see him again. At the same time, he's such a loser that I don't really want to have sex with him. Rarity coughed loudly, her ears folding back. My, aren't we wonderfully carefree in our comments? Pinky rolled her eyes. Besides, it sounds absolutely dreadful when you say it like that, Pinky. I just want my foals back. Rarity nodded. Pinky had explained her hopes before. There was no reason to explain them again. I've been thinking a lot about your, um, situation, and I thought of something that might be worth considering. Pinky's ears perked up. What's that? Adoption. Pinky set her spoon down. She tried to reply, but her mind went blank. What made you think of it? A few days ago, Applejack told me she was considering it. She had a lot of complicated reasons, but I thought about it, and I thought those reasons would apply to you too. Like what? Pinky picked up her spoon again, genuinely curious. Well, you know, it was such a trauma for her to wake up, suddenly, years younger and having never even met the father of her foal. If she adopts, and dear me, I hope it doesn't, but if somehow we ended up in the past again, she wouldn't have to feel such a sense of loss. The child's existence wouldn't be determined by her own actions. She could hope that he, or she, would be around somewhere, even if she made different choices. Pinky inhaled sharply, dropping her spoon again. It clattered as it hit the table, but Pinky didn't notice. Rarity reached over and took Pinky's hoof in her own. Listen, dear, I know you're really hoping that you can get the same foals again. You've told me many times. But I think you're setting yourself up for disappointment. What if you finally do have a foal with one of those gentle cults again, and the foal turns out to be obviously not the one from before? Wouldn't you feel awful? And what about the foal? Pinky shook her head, suddenly in shock. Are you saying I wouldn't love my foal even if it wasn't what I hoped for? Rarity didn't seem taken aback at all. But that's just it, Pinky. Why are you putting so much of yourself into this when you'd be perfectly happy with different foals? Although I never had children, I understand what it feels like to lose everything. We all do. But we've all tried to move on as best we can. Why can't you do so now? Pinky looked down at the table, then glanced at her hoof, still held in Rarity's hoof. She looked at her bowl of ice cream as it melted from the warm air. I'll think about it. And she would. Apple Dash, where's your sister? Now, don't tell me she forgot again. Sorry, Ma, said Apple Dash, having just arrived, her wings tightly clamped around her torso in nervousness. I'm sure she'll be here soon. Applejack sighed. Apple Pie was always getting caught up in some crazy adventure or another. Applejack remembered having her own fair share of adventures, sometimes the same ones more than once, but she didn't think they ever made her miss important family events. I hope so. I was hoping for everyone to be here for my birthday. I'm here! Applejack looked up to where the voice came from and saw the familiar form of Apple Pie in the sky. The pink mare landed roughly before giving a sheepish grin to her mother. Sorry I'm late, Ma. Well, that's all right, now that every pony's here. She looked around. Every pony was there. Applejack felt so happy to see everyone all together for her. We can start the party! Applejack laughed along with everyone else at Pinky, now a middle-aged mare, still getting excited about parties like a little school filly. She had outstretched her front hooves and somehow managed to put a party hat on her head, a smaller version of Applejack's own Stetson hat, and set off two party crackers at the same time, confetti exploding out into the field. 
Applejack had worried that Pinky, making her hobby her job, might have taken some of the fun out of it for her, but apparently it didn't. I have pinned the tail on the pony, shouted Pinky after the laughter had died down. She walked to a nearby tree, one of the few in the clearing, and pointed a hoof. Any pony want to play? She looked at Rarity. I know at least one pony does. Rarity smiled. It was still her favorite game. Applejack liked the game a lot herself, but after watching her brother and sister crowd around the game with Rarity and Pinky, she decided she could wait a bit before playing. Do you want me to get anything for you, Ma? I see Pinkie Pie set up an awful lot of food for your party. Quit your fussin', I'm no cripple. Not yet, anyway. Hey, Applejack! Rainbow Dash walked up. She was beginning to look visibly pregnant. Catching sight of the kids, she said, And Apple Dash, haven't seen you in a while. Apple Dash rolled her eyes. Rainbow, I saw you just last week. Well, I see your sister so often, I hardly see you in comparison. Some of us have work to do on the farm. Rainbow Dash laughed. You're just like your mom. Apples, apples, apples. I'd like to think she's more like her uncle. I had plenty of fun when I was her age. Sometimes I think I still have more fun than her. Girl needs to learn to lighten up some. Oh, Ma, now you sound like Apple Pie. Apple Pie stuck her tongue out at her sister. Apple Jack didn't scold her. It was all in good fun. Rainbow Dash peered over Apple Dash's shoulder, her smile turning into something more like a smirk. I see Spikes found the cupcakes Pinky made for him. I better go stop him before he eats too many and gets sick again. Applejack nodded, and Rainbow Dash trotted off toward her husband. That's gonna be one strange family. Applejack smiled to herself. I'm going to get me something to eat. Apple Dash watched her sister walk off to talk to Rainbow Dash and Spike. I'm pretty hungry, too. Sure you don't want me to bring you anything, Ma? Now didn't I say not to worry? I'll eat when I'm hungry. Applejack watched her overly responsible daughter help herself to some carrot sticks. Having fun, AJ? Big Mac had somehow snuck up behind her and was carrying an apple fritter on his back. Sure am. I haven't moved from this here spot since the party started. I wonder how much fun I'll have when I actually do something. Big Mac smiled. It's just nice to see everyone all together. He understood her feelings exactly. I brought you this here apple fritter. Big Mac arched its back. Now why does every pony think I can't get food for myself? It's your birthday. That's what the presents are for. Applejack grinned widely. Applejack chatted with her brother a bit before moving on to really get into the party. There had been a time when Applejack thought she'd never feel happy like this again. Even after Twilight was taken care of and Celestia stopped poking around, Applejack still had a difficult time. But after a while, with the help of her friends, she had been able to return to something like a normal life. When she adopted Apple Dash and Apple Pie, she was almost back to her old self. They were so cute when she adopted them. Twins, Pegasus ponies, whose parents had died in an accident. She didn't know what it was, but she knew as soon as she saw them that she wanted to help. She named them after her friends. They were easy choices. Apple Dash's coat was blue. Apple Pie's coat was pink. So how could she not name them after her friends with blue and pink coats? Funny how neither turned out like their namesakes. They were great and Applejack couldn't imagine how it was possible to love a pony so much. She wished her siblings would start to settle down soon. Applebloom was still young, and she still didn't have her cutie mark, but she wasn't that young anymore, and Applejack didn't want her to end up like Big Mac. Poor Big Mac, he still had trouble with the mares. He was just too quiet, and when he did speak, it was in a slow drawl. It probably made him seem slow. She hoped one day he'd find a mare who could see past that. Pinkie Pie had decided to stay single. She had also decided to not adopt. Applejack didn't really understand, and Pinkie had never explained, but she had faith Pinkie had a good reason. Rarity had mellowed considerably over the years. That Applejack understood, because Rarity had explained it. Eventually. Rainbow Dash was the biggest surprise, not because of how she had changed, but because Applejack got to see her grow in the first place. It was the biggest and most profound positive change to Applejack's life after dying, outside Apple Dash and Apple Pie, of course. Sometimes it had been a little awkward. She had been young, and just didn't have the experience that her other time-traveling friends had. 
and unlike Fluttershy, nobody knew exactly what pitfalls to avoid with her. It had been an experience, to say the least. Fluttershy was the hardest. It took a lot of work to keep her in the group because she was the only one who hadn't had the same experience as the rest of them. It had been Rainbow Dash who had one day told her everything, of course, doing so without talking to any pony else first. It had been a mess, but Applejack couldn't deny Fluttershy had been easier to be around after that. Applejack enjoyed her party thoroughly. Having both her kids around really helped her keep her mind on having fun and enjoying every pony's company. All too soon, though, it was time for the party to end. Applejack said goodbye to everyone, saving Rainbow Dash and Spike for last, thanking them for hosting the party. It was refreshing to have a party somewhere other than Sweet Apple Acres. Sugar Cube Corner was never an option anymore because it always made Pinkie Pie sad. Back at the farm, Applejack took some time before bed to make herself something to drink. She didn't drink often, but a bit of liquor every now and then never hurt no pony. She sat down across from Apple Dash, who lay on the floor reading a book of some kind. She always liked to read a bit before bed. Applejack's eyes caught sight of an old picture hanging on the wall. It had been taken... must have been ten, maybe twelve years ago. It was Applejack, Big Mac, Apple Bloom, and Granny Smith, all together, smiling. Applejack looked at herself in that photo. It wasn't obvious she had gotten a lot better at faking smiles over the years, but she wasn't really happy in that picture. It had been taken around the year she had died. She would have known then that she wasn't going to ever see her baby Rainbow Bloom, and neither would any pony else. She took a sip of her drink and looked at Apple Dash. Apple Dash looked up at her, as if sensing she was being looked at. They held eyes for a moment before a look of concern crossed Apple Dash's face. Is something wrong, Ma? Applejack blinked and realized her eyes were moist. She wiped them with her hoof, taking another sip of her drink, and then smiled. I was just thinking. About what? Apple Dash folded the top corner of her book before closing it and looking up at Applejack. About you and your sister and... Oh, what the hey. Did I ever mention you almost had another sister? Apple Dash's eyes widened, and she shook her head. Applejack didn't think she should tell the whole story, but she really wanted some pony to know about Rainbow Bloom, somebody who had a good chance of outliving her. So, she told the story. Rainbow Dash woke up. Her joints ached, but it was nothing a bit of moving around wouldn't cure. She liked to move around. It was too bad she couldn't move like she used to. She was old. Her once rainbow-colored mane and tail were now just various shades of gray. Her coat was still blue, but it was a lot less vibrant than it used to be. Her eyes hadn't changed, though. She hadn't lost her wits like some of the other older ponies. Neither had her friends. Of course, her husband hadn't lost his wits either. How could he have? He was just barely out of his teen years. Dragons aged differently than ponies. Every pony knew that, and she knew that when they started dating. She knew that when they got married, when she had a daughter, and she knew that when the first streaks of grey started showing up in her mane. It didn't stop her from being bitter about it, but like most things, it got better with time. Now, she hardly ever begrudged him for being so youthful, and she never picked fights about it anymore. She was old. It just didn't seem important to wish to be younger anymore. Besides, she had gotten everything she ever wanted. First of all, she got to live. Even dying hadn't stopped her from living. She had joined the Wonderbolts, had a very successful flying career, dated, married, foaled, and was expecting a grandfoal soon. She had great friends, and got to be with them as they all went on to live and do all the things they wanted to do, with a few hiccups here and there, of course. Being murdered had taken its toll, but it had been so long now. For Rainbow Dash, it was like there was never a break in the continuity. For her friends, their original lives were almost like a dream. Rainbow Dash was stirred out of her thoughts from a loud rumbling sound. She rolled onto her other side, the soft cloud below her bobbing up and down a bit as she did so. She was facing her husband now. Spike had woken up. He yawned, a loud sound echoing through the cave they shared. Morning. Rainbow Dash couldn't help but giggle to herself whenever she thought about how he used to sound when he was just a baby. Good morning. She stood up, her joints giving soft pops as she moved. 
She stretched out her wings, gave a few test flaps, and then slowly made her way off the cloud and down to the ground. She was lucky. Most Pegasus ponies her age couldn't fly, but she had always stayed healthy and in shape. Spike sat up slowly, smoothing the scales along his head back with his giant clawed hand. Rainbow Dash headed toward her own little spot of the cave, where she tried to manage her own bedhead. Rainbow Bloom visiting today? Asked Spike as Rainbow Dash gargled some mouthwash. She spat. Yep. Their daughter had been showing up every week, demanding stories of their lives. Where her name came from, the decision to be artificially inseminated, the process of finding a sperm donor both Dash and Spike liked, their wedding, how Dash joined the Wonderbolts. Rainbow Dash figured it was just hormones. Mares got weird when they were pregnant. Not that Rainbow Dash didn't enjoy seeing her daughter more often. Raising a filly had been difficult, and there were times during her teenage years that Rainbow Dash had been, well, not the best of mothers. She was too tough, not understanding enough, overprotective, and it took her years to learn to listen to her daughter. She had gotten better at it, though. All those bad times were long gone. They had barely started to eat their breakfast when Rainbow Bloom showed up. There wasn't a door to knock on, ponies just walked in all the time, unless Spike and Rainbow Dash really didn't want company, in which case Rainbow Dash used to pile clouds to block the entrance. She was too old for that now, but it didn't matter because she was also too old to need privacy. Besides, Spike was too big. Hi, Mom and Dad. Spike grunted as he chewed on some diamonds from his hoard. Rainbow Dash grinned. You sure it's safe to be out? You look like you're going to pop any day now. Rainbow Bloom scoffed. I don't look that bad. You think so? I don't think I ever looked like that when I was pregnant with you. Dash. His voice was hard to ignore. If I remember right, you were worse, and you hated it. Because I couldn't fly. Lucky I retired from the Wonderbolts then. Luck had nothing to do with it. They chatted amicably while Rainbow Dash finished her breakfast. Eating was kind of a chore now. Her stomach couldn't handle some of the heavier stuff she used to like. As soon as she was done, Rainbow Bloom got that glow in her eye that said she wanted to hear a story. Rainbow Dash chuckled to herself, wondering what it would be this time. So... Rainbow Bloom rubbed the back of her green and blue mane before continuing. Yes? Spike rolled his eyes. Could you tell me how you and Dad got together? Rainbow Dash looked at Spike. He looked back, and their eyes met. She tried to remember it all, and it occurred to her that this was a story Rainbow Bloom hadn't actually heard before. It had just never come up. For Rainbow Bloom, their relationship always was. It's not that interesting. Not as interesting as you'd think, anyway. It really just sort of happened. Tell me anyway. Rainbow Bloom sat down in a comfortable position, as if it were already decided that she was getting a story. Rainbow Dash sighed. Fine, she said, before sitting down herself. She opened her mouth to begin the story, but realized there was already a problem. She didn't want to talk about Twilight. None of her friends had so much as mentioned her name out loud ever since she'd been taken care of. At least not in her presence. Well, we met when... Spike, sensing her dilemma, took over. You know when I was an assistant when I was younger? I was assigned to ponies to help them keep notes, organize their living spaces, run errands, and stuff like that. Rainbow Bloom nodded. Well, your mom and I met when the pony I was assisting moved to Ponyville. That didn't last long, though. I was assigned to some pony else after a week and moved back to Canterlot. Then how did anything ever happen? It was okay for Rainbow Dash to take over now. He was sad about leaving, so I offered to keep in touch. In fact, our correspondence was through letters for, like, a long time. She widened her forelegs to show how long it was. <laughs> there were a lot of letters. Oh, yeah. It hadn't started off that way, but after a while, Spike's letters had become something Dash had looked forward to, and she found herself spending more and more time thinking about what she was going to tell him in her next letter. It was like having a diary that actually wrote back. There was even a point where they exchanged letters daily. The mail ponies must have been paid overtime. I didn't see Spike again until I went to Canterlot to try out for the Wonderbolts. We hung out. I tried out for the Wonderbolts. We hung out some more. Well, that's all very interesting, said Rainbow Bloom, bringing a hoof to her mouth and yawning over dramatically. But how did you fall in love? That's what I want to hear. 
She said it like she was a teenage filly reading a sappy romantic novel. Rainbow Dash thought about it. She looked at Spike again. When did it happen? She couldn't think of a time when she didn't love him and then suddenly did. But there was a time. You know, I hate telling you this, but you're my daughter, so I guess I'll have to suck it up and say it. Rainbow Bloom smiled like she had just won a prize. When I was living in Canterlot, Spike and I saw a lot of each other. And when I was given some time off, I'd head back to Ponyville to see all my friends. And I'd take Spike with me. By this time, Spike was exchanging letters with all my friends, too. He says he didn't get as many letters from them as from me, which is probably true because I'm so awesome and- Mom, don't start talking about how awesome you are. You'll never stop. Ain't that the truth? Rainbow Dash glared at him. Well, anyway, I would always fly him to Ponyville in a carriage. And one time, Spike fell out. It was stupid. I kept trying to get Dash to do some tricks for me. I figured, why not? She's a Wonderbolt, and the greatest flyer in all of Equestria. She could do something cool while she was still carrying me. And like an idiot, I finally agreed to try it. Rainbow Dash sighed, thinking back to that day. I thought he was going to die. There was only one other time I had to save a friend from falling. When was that? Rainbow Dash opened her mouth, but then closed it. That had never happened. Not this time. That's not part of the story. Anyway, I wasn't that high. There wasn't a lot of time to build up speed. And I still had that stupid carriage attached to me. I still remember thinking how I had to save him. How I couldn't let him die. How my entire life wouldn't be worth living without him. I had never accelerated as fast as I did then. I don't think I ever did after, either. She did catch me, though. Obviously. Rainbow Dash nodded her head slowly. She suddenly realized she was looking past Rainbow Bloom and focused back on her daughter. Well, after I yelled at him and myself for being so stupid, I realized something. That he was very important to me. And that I loved him. That's kind of interesting. But not that interesting, said Spike, repeating his comment from before. Rainbow Dash continued to explain things about their developing relationship, with Spike filling in bits from his perspective. The first date, the first kiss, when Spike asked her to marry him. It took a long time. I keep wondering, why are you asking us all of this? Rainbow Bloom didn't seem to need to think about it. Because I want my foe to know about his grandparents. You're both wonderful, and I don't want the things you did to be forgotten when I die. I'm touched. She was, but she didn't want to show it. But you won't have to worry about that. Spike will still be around long after you're gone. He'll remember everything for us. There was a pause as Rainbow Bloom let that thought sink in. I guess he will. Are you ready? Rainbow Dash nodded silently. I can't believe you still do things like this. It's what we've always done, she said. Just because we're old doesn't mean we can't still hang out. You're not just old. Rainbow Dash smiled at his comment. She was lucky to be still alive after so long. They all were. As Rainbow Dash and Spike left their cave, across the forest and into town, Pinkie Pie was brushing her mane. She didn't have as far to go, and she didn't have to leave quite as early. Her once vibrant pink hair was all dull and gray now. Her cutie marks still held color, though. Setting down the brush, Pinkie Pie took one last look at herself. Satisfied that she was presentable for her friends, she went to the kitchen to pick up her basket of goodies before leaving her house. Applejack and Rarity nodded to each other as they met. They still lived close to each other, and so decided to make the walk to Fluttershy's cottage together. They both carried saddlebags filled with various items. Despite being so old, Applejack was still as tough as ever. Rarity, though, was finally starting to slow down. She had become a slow walker in her old age, her joints aching with every step. But she didn't let it show. Applejack knew, though, and didn't go faster than they needed to. Pinkie Pie arrived first, outside of Fluttershy, who had already set down a large blanket and a few pillows for every pony to sit on. They could still handle the bare ground, but old ponies deserved a little extra comfort sometimes. Rainbow Dash hadn't brought anything, but Spike brought a bunch of extra gems to munch on while he kept his wife company. By the time Applejack and Rarity showed up, the picnic was shaping up nicely. Applejack and Rarity set down their saddlebags and arranged their contents onto the blanket. Sandwiches, small cakes, bowls of hay, carrots. It was all very simple fare. 
How's your grandson, Rainbow? Asked Applejack, slowly chewing on one of her own sandwiches. Spike was off, looking out toward the sky, his huge frame providing shade for the ponies. Last I heard, he was denied membership into the Wonderbolts. He should be on his way back home now, actually. Why? How could they go and deny him? Kid's just as good as you were at that age. Rainbow Dash shrugged. He'll get in. He takes after me. He's not going to let a little thing like rejection ruin his dreams. Rainbow Dash laughed at the thought of him giving up. No way that would happen. I'll have to throw him a party tomorrow. My dear, aren't you a little old for that? Rarity was smiling, though, and wasn't at all serious about the comment. I still have a few more parties left in me. Pinky grinned. I'll help you then. Rarity smiled back. The picnic continued for hours. When they got together, they could spend a very long time talking, telling jokes and stories, or just doing nothing at all but enjoying each other's company. As the sun began to set, every pony began to pack up. Rainbow Dash especially had to get back soon. She suspected her grandson would show up later to talk about his tryout and where it went wrong, and she wanted to make sure he didn't arrive to an empty cave. They said their goodbyes, made plans to all get together again like this soon, and headed back to their homes. Rainbow Dash did get to see her grandson later, and he told her everything about what had happened. She agreed to coach him until he got into the Wonderbolts, and it looked like her job wasn't over yet. Pinky and Rarity teamed up to plan a party for him. It wouldn't be a huge thing, just a small welcome home party. Pinky still loved parties, but even she had to admit, they couldn't be as big as they used to be. Applejack did what she had always done. She took care of her family and the farm, although what that meant, now that she was too old to work, was that she helped keep the books, make dinner, and help clean the house, at least when Applejack wasn't trying to do it all herself. Late that night, when they were all tucked in their beds, or in Rainbow Dash's case, asleep on her cloud, the four of them, who came from the future so long ago, would have a dream. A dream about that world they each left at separate times. In it, a Fluttershy and Spike, very much like the ones they now knew, fought against an aged pony, a pony they had done their best to forget about. They saw Twilight's defeat in that other world, and for a moment they could all feel that old anger and hatred bubble back to the surface as she lay there, writhing and pathetic, before Fluttershy ended it. They woke up with a start in the middle of the night. They each knew it wasn't just a dream, although part of them wished it was. The two worlds were very different from each other now, but some things stayed the same. Rarity was the only one to confirm what they all didn't want to believe, as she stepped outside her house and looked toward Canterlot. She couldn't see it very well at first, but her magic made things clear. That battle between Celestia and Luna was happening here in this world, too, on the same day. Rarity thought it was kind of strange. Given what she had seen in the dream, she would have thought that without Twilight, Luna would have attacked at a different time. She knew the next day they could wake up to a new government. Rarity especially had no love for Celestia, and she hoped Luna would emerge triumphant here this time. But there was no point in worrying about it. She was old, and so were her friends. They couldn't do anything about it, and even under the most optimistic projections, they wouldn't live long enough to need to worry about the long-term effects of a change in diarchy, or an attempted coup. So, Rarity turned around and went back to bed. Whatever the next day would bring politically, she wouldn't worry about it. It was more important to throw that party. All her friends would be there, after all, and Pinky wouldn't want to throw a bad party. Breaking the Circle The first time, she had killed the holders of the Elements of Harmony in order to sever the elements. She had failed. The one she saved for last turned out to be stronger than anticipated, and that had been her ultimate undoing. The second time, she changed tactics. Having learned that a proper severing required a different course of action, she had set out to gain them, this time without killing their owners, only because it wasn't required. She had failed again, when she didn't realize she wasn't the only one to get a second chance. The third time, she was sure she would succeed. She would be alone this time, and even though she didn't have to, she'd kill the holders just to spite them. And she almost did succeed, 
but of course circumstances had not allowed her to finish her task again this time because a certain rainbow-maned pegasus somehow got wise and stopped her the fourth time she had foregone vengeance but to her surprise she was once again not alone and so failed again this doesn't make any sense magic just smiled how could they have gone back? I took their elements. I mean, I really took them. <sighs> How could the magic affect them when they aren't holding their elements anymore? To be honest, I wasn't sure it had happened myself. I suspected, but that's not the same thing as knowing. And of course, you couldn't share this suspicion with me. Twilight rolled her eyes. Nope. You know I don't like what you're doing, but for some pony as clever as you, I'm surprised you didn't suspect anything yourself. Our magic clearly works without temporal limits. Outside of here, anyway. Certainly it's not too big a stretch to assume the others could save their hosts after their deaths. It is too big a stretch. I don't think it makes any sense. Twilight sighed. But I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll try again. I'll forget about vengeance. That just makes them mad and causes too many problems. Not to mention pain. Whatever you like. And the fifth time, Twilight thought she was getting somewhere. What could go wrong? She wouldn't kill them. They'd survive, and she'd just get the job done. Until Rarity died accidentally, her body being unable to withstand the sudden loss of her element. Somehow, the one death got the others suspicious, and she was caught and killed. This next one's a lost cause. Rarity will be here, I'm sure of it. Magic nodded. There's something I'm curious about. I can't say I'll answer any question you have. This will be the third time Rarity has gone back. She won't remember all the other rarities. But does her element remember? Magic smiled. I'll ask next time I see her. Twilight assumed victory was impossible, so the sixth time she just vented out her frustrations by killing random ponies. She only successfully took Rarity's element, only because she wanted magic to answer her question. Rarity stopped her again, the same thing happened as before, and Twilight found herself once again in magic's presence. So? She knew. Might have something to do with the non-temporal thing. I don't know, this is getting too complicated, even for me. I'll think about it more. Maybe I'll figure it out. She smiled again, that smile that Twilight couldn't stand the sight of. You're bringing me a lot of interesting puzzles, Twilight. I hope you solve yours eventually. The seventh time, something odd happened. Celestia demanded that Twilight use the heterodox method of severing elements. It meant Twilight would have to kill ponies, angering them and endangering the plan. But still, the princess was the princess, and Twilight tried again, avoiding all the pitfalls of the previous rotations. But it wasn't enough. New pitfalls grew where there used to be none. Spike found out again. Pinkie Pie had believed him, and together they stopped her. She hadn't even gotten four of them. Why did Celestia act differently? She had never refused my suggestion before. I noticed. Not exactly the way you noticed, but I noticed. It's very strange. Another interesting puzzle. I think a few more circles will solve the problem. Circles? What else would you call them? You're doing the same things over and over, and the same things keep happening. The slight differences don't matter. It keeps happening, you go back, you end up back here, and on and on it goes. There haven't been that many go-arounds. Give it time. Something tells me this will continue. The next time was a throwaway. Twilight didn't do anything this time, but they came for her, and she found herself back in that purple fog, with magic. Shut up said Twilight as soon as she caught sight of Magic. Magic only smiled that hated smile. It kept happening. No matter what Twilight did, she could no longer convince the princess to try the new severing method, which meant Twilight kept making enemies of the ponies, which meant her returns to the past kept being punctuated with impossible reiterations where success could not happen. The only thing that changed were the details. Sometimes it was Fluttershy, like the first. Other times Pinkie Pie stopped her. Still others, Applejack and Rainbow Dash, would show up together or individually. Rarity had her fair share of successes as well. That was until Twilight started to pay more attention to the details of the worlds around her. Magic had alluded to it before. Things were the same, but things were changing. It was a puzzle. I think I figured it out. 
Twilight had lost count of how many times she had shown up here, ready for another try. Figured what out? Those small changes. The changes are much more obvious compared to where we started. What is it, then? Twilight was tired of talking to this thing, not just for the moment, but in general. Talking to magic meant she had failed again. She was starting to think her task was impossible. I think our magic is a bit flawed. We're not quite sending you back to the past. We're sending you to another universe entirely. One that's very similar to, but not quite the same as the one before. And these changes keep piling up. That's nice, said Twilight, eager to get back to the real world. It really changes the whole view of this situation, but it doesn't look like you're too interested, so I'll just send you back to your... life. Twilight failed again. It didn't matter how anymore. No matter what she did, something would happen that would lead to her downfall. She began to just go through the motions. Princess Celestia would ask her to sever elements. She'd say yes. She'd get as far as she could, and then back to magic she'd go and it'd start all over again. She didn't even change tactics when it was an iteration where she wasn't alone. It just didn't matter. It'd happen again. And again. And again. I don't see why you can't just refuse. You don't refuse the princess. She'll kill me. She probably wouldn't snap your horn. You wouldn't end up back here. I don't want to die. Twilight never tried to outright ignore the princess. But maybe there was another way. You say elements choose their holders? Yes. Could they all... choose me? Twilight used to think that that was an impossible goal, to get all the elements to choose her. But it looked like she had a lot of time now, and her current course wasn't leading anywhere. Theoretically, as long as you exemplify the element better than any other pony. But really, do you think you could manage to get the other elements to choose you? I don't know if you know this, but you're kind of a psychopath. Twilight didn't even get angry at the insult. Could you imagine? You, being so kind that you put that poor pony Fluttershy to shame. Or so loyal that loyalty chooses you instead of Rainbow Dash? Magic laughed. Twilight hardly ever heard her laugh. It's a plan. And so, Twilight tried. She focused on a single element each round. The first time, it was honesty. That seemed to be easy, until it came time to lie to another pony in order to sever an element the old-fashioned way. Rarity thought she was joking, but Twilight continued to be honest that yes, it was her that stole everything from Rarity, and that she was going to kill Rarity and take her element. And she did. And she didn't lie when the others asked about it. And she found herself back in front of magic. Kindness was difficult to pull off, but she had to admit that she rarely gave any thought to her friends' well-being when she took their elements. She said it was all business, not personal, but that really wasn't true. She liked it. So she tried to not like it so much, to be more merciful to her victims, to make things as easy for them as possible. Twilight didn't think she was going to get that element anytime soon. The third time, it was laughter. She tried to keep a positive outlook. She didn't think it was working. She certainly didn't feel like laughing when she failed again. Thinking about it, she wasn't any more virtuous. It just made her actions even more awful. Twilight didn't really know how she could be generous. She tried to be generous to her friends when they weren't her current targets, but that didn't really make up for what she ultimately had to do. Loyalty? She couldn't even try to take the other elements and remain loyal to her friends. But she could try to take them and be loyal to Celestia. Of course, she had been loyal to Celestia for all these countless iterations. By that reasoning, she had been the most loyal pony ever. And it had gotten her nothing. So instead, she tried being loyal to her friends. It was the first time she ever did it. It was a completely new experience. When Celestia asked her to sever elements, she smiled and said yes, and then immediately went to her friends and told them what was going on. They were shocked and didn't believe her at first, but Twilight had proof, and they eventually accepted the truth. And together, they tried to stop Celestia. It was stupid. They were doomed to fail. A stroke of luck. Celestia snapped Twilight's horn off before killing her. And so, back to magic she went. Twilight was the first to die. She didn't know if her friends had succeeded. 
It's not so bad not being a crazy pony bent on killing your friends, is it? Twilight shrugged. She didn't know what to think anymore. At the beginning of the next iteration, Twilight decided it'd be easier to coax the elements of harmony toward her if she wasn't trying to kill their holders. And so again, she agreed to sever the elements to Celestia's face, but then turned around and told her friends. They failed again, and again Twilight's horn snapped. This is stretching probability. There's no strong motivation for the princess to snap my horn, yet she keeps doing it. Maybe someone's pushing things in that direction. Magic wore a wry smile. Twilight didn't think magic could do that, but then again she didn't want to die so she wasn't going to press the matter. Again and again she gathered her friends and stood against Celestia, and again and again she failed. She had run out of ideas. She was going to do this forever. The worlds she was going back to were monumentally different from the one she had started from. Ponies were popping in and out of existence. She couldn't remember the last time she saw Peanut Rush in Ponyville. Heck, the Everfree Fields didn't seem to exist anymore. A thought finally occurred to Twilight. You know how every new world is slightly different than the one before it? Magic nodded. Do you think you could try and put me in a world with a specific difference? Magic put a hoof to her chin in thought. I could try. I've learned a lot about this process. You wouldn't believe how many times I've had to send you back. Don't tell me. Twilight figured the number would just depress her. There was a pause. Do you think you could try and send me to a world where Princess Celestia doesn't ask me to sever elements? Finally having a change of heart. Magic positively glowed in happiness as she clopped her hooves together. That's wonderful news. She said it as if she already knew said news. I had a change of heart a long time ago. It was Twilight's only hope now, that one day she'd show up and never be sent on that stupid self-destructive path. She didn't want to live forever, going on the same fruitless quest over and over. Neither did she want to die. She just wanted a normal life, free from struggle. She hoped she'd get it. She started to chronicle the changes of the world in her mind. Relationships changed. Buildings in Ponyville popped in and out of existence. Finally, a glimmer of progress. Princess Celestia seemed genuinely surprised when Twilight suggested another coup by Princess Luna. It gave Twilight hope that magic really was directing her toward a world where Celestia herself was different. What are you going to do if you end up in such a world? Do you really think you can just go and live a normal life? You've lived thousands of years. I'm almost surprised you're still sane. I told you a long time ago I didn't want a number, but I have a solution to that problem. Oh? I'd be interested in hearing it. You know I like puzzles. And solutions to puzzles. You'll see when I get there. Think of it as motivation to put me in that world. Magic smiled. Twilight found she didn't hate that smile as much as she used to. Again and again she went, around and around, watching the changes in the world around her. She was shocked when the changes started affecting her own personal history. But they weren't what she was hoping for, so she simply acknowledged them and moved on. She was lonely. The only creature who really knew her now was magic, and from her perspective, she only got to see the element sporadically. One iteration, after a month after telling the other ponies of Celestia's request, she made a decision. She'd tell them her story. The whole story. They were incredulous, but she relentlessly pushed the truth upon them. And what they did surprised her. They forgave her. Now, more than ever, she wanted to just live a normal life with them, to able to really be their friend. It would be a long, long time before then, but eventually... It happened. The date when Celestia sent her on her journey to sever elements never changed, not once in all the constant repeats of her life. But this time, it did. It passed, and nothing happened. Twilight waited a week. She didn't want to get her hopes up, but she didn't want to wait too long if it turned out this was the one. The world she was looking for. She requested an audience with the princess. She tiptoed around the issue. Celestia gave no hint that she knew what Twilight was talking about. Finally, Twilight directly asked if Celestia was going to send her on some fool's errand to collect the other elements. 
Celestia looked positively astonished, almost offended, that Twilight would suggest such a thing. Relief washed over Twilight's face, and for the first time in a very long time, she cried. This was different, though. These were tears of joy. After asking the princess to never bring up that matter ever again, Twilight teleported back home. This was where she'd live a normal life. Spike was asleep in his cot. She'd be a real friend to him. She'd be a real friend to all of them. She'd be a good pony. She wouldn't live forever. But she had already lived close to that, so it was no big loss. Now, she would enjoy a new experience. Concentrating, Twilight worked hard to erase her memories, starting from the very beginning. She'd start this life with a clean slate, just enough to know her own history, enough to continue on in this life, but nothing of all the struggles she had gone through before, of all the pain and torment she had caused, both to the other ponies and to herself. When she was almost done, she had forgotten why she was doing it, but she trusted herself, and assuming she had a good reason, she continued. The last thing to go was the knowledge of the memory-altering spell itself. Twilight looked around. She didn't know what she was doing up at this hour. She must have lost track of time while studying, although there wasn't a book in front of her. Maybe she had put it up already? She mentally shrugged. She should really get to bed. Applejack wanted to hang out the next day, so she probably should get some rest. You never knew exactly what kind of physically exhausting things you'd do while hanging out with Applejack. <laughs>